Hey, good morning, students. Uh, Saturday morning, game day. Woohoo, go Knights. Um, here we go. Uh, public policy and politics is our uh, module two. Um, now, the first activity in there, the first discussion was uh, designed merely to uh, introduce you to some of the tools that are available out there. See the inner workings of Congress, how duties are assigned, the committees are manned, everything else. I'll notice um, a lot of you guys wrote a lot of information. I don't know if you copy-pasted or if you did all that work. Wow. Nobody complained. I was impressed. Um, be honest, I think it's unnecessary to um, have an activity that's writing that much that really offers so little in return. Yeah, it's a good exercise, but I'm not going to have students in uh, future, you know, sections, you know, writing that much. So, you know, thanks for being patient there. And I am cognizant of, you know, the demands I place on you. So I'm not trying to just, you know, you know, just say, hey, it's not me that has to do it, you know, so uh, I just want to let you know, <laughs> my bad, I'll uh, make sure I uh, have appropriately scaled activities from now on. Uh, next activity, interpreting policy studies, okay, given the cries of fake news, which I uh, did see a lot of people mention, you know, fake news in their posts. The exercise basically was designed to help you understand what to look for when you determine validity and, you know, you discover bias. Okay, and, uh, you know, that's important, especially noting, uh, uh, you know, how, how readily available information is and, uh, you know, you can make some awesome websites that look really impressive, but they don't have to necessarily be accurate either. So it's good to have those skills to be able to, you know, look at these sites and look at these organizations and say, is this legitimate or not? Okay, right? Um, quick aside, I don't know how many have gone any, uh, blah, 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 excuse me, <laughs> how many of you students have actually gone on the uh, Tallahassee field trip? Um, you know, uh, I think it's usually just before the legislative session up in Tallahassee, which alternates between January or uh, March, you know, depending on which year it is. Anyway, um, I actually uh, led that charge a number of years, and it was a great opportunity. Unfortunately, I doubt seriously they're going to be doing it this next um, spring, but if you ever do have that opportunity, take full advantage of it. It's a, a cheap way to see uh, the inner workings of the state level government. One particular agency that um, we visit every time is the Office of Program Policy Analysis and Government Accountability, APAGA. That's the way I always remember it. And they are awesome. What they do is they're the research agency for the Florida legislature. They are non-political, so basically, you know, both sides of the aisle, you know, call on them to, you know, research. Okay, tell us about seatbelts. You know, are they good or bad? How many, how many people, you know, uh, you know, don't wear seatbelts or you know, whatever. You know, those those kind of questions. And I'm sorry, I misspoke. It's not necessarily an interpretation of if it's good or bad. They report the facts, and then what you find, really, is that these legislators will kind of cherry-pick, you know, the points from these studies and say, well, you see, OPAGA found that da-da-da-da-da, and they use it to, you know, support their particular position or whatever. They cover all manner of uh, subject matter areas. It's really interesting um, to see that aspect of policy making up at the state level. They, okay, you know, they start it, you know, some, some, uh, some rep is going up to Tallahassee and they're like, okay, we need to find out something about, well, think about uh, Amendment 4, you know, the last election with the um, uh, convicted felons. Are they able to vote, you know, or not, you know, whatever. And then they actually did the research this is what we found. This is how many felons there are that, you know, qualify or don't qualify. This is the uh, obstacles they face, whatever. They answer those kind of questions. It's really neat. So anyway, moving on. Uh, next activity was why do people join interest groups? Now, um, it started out with a whole list of questions, the first of which was 
um, discussing logic of collective action. Admittedly, this was poorly worded. I did not word that. I just want you to know. Um, it, it said, do you agree with? I think it should have been like, do you understand what it means? Now, uh, one of your um, colleagues, uh, Shaban Mohammed, pointed out, wouldn't be smart for anybody to join an interest group if you're not personally gaining anything from it. Uh, someone's personal benefits should not be the sole reason why they choose to support an interest group, right? Just made that observation, you know, based on the theorists, you know, assertions that why would someone join an interest group if they don't benefit from it, right? Um, to which I retorted, I believe it was Olson, the theorist, who missed the mark and just didn't truly understand what why people would come together you know, altruistically, right? And, you know, why would they, why do people feel the need to come together and do something for their community if they don't personally benefit from this, right? Um, I did give him an out. Um, you know, maybe he did recognize um, the issues and just uh, set forth uh, rhetorical questions to make you think about it, right? But anyway, um, it just, it just, you can always go back and see, uh, my comments. It's pretty lengthy, so I'm not going to waste your time here just regurgitating that, but it does make you think. I, I appreciate your, uh, question there, Mohammed, and I hope I was able to address that, uh, adequately in our, uh, post. Um, other, something else in the, uh, discussion, uh, question asking about confidence and credible information. Uh, many found information to be credible. You know, are these, it was asking specifically, are these, do you find these websites credible? And, you know, a lot of people said, yeah, I've, you know, I thought it was pretty good. But then, like ben, uh, Clay Benjamin, one of your other colleagues, said, every interest group has an agenda they're pushing. That's why they're created in the first place. They will manipulate data in order to win people over to their cause. So you should always, you know, verify through multiple sources. Actually, I think that warrants a gold star. I think that's a pretty wise um, observation. You know, it's like, hey, you think about it. Even it, now, I used to teach survey research methods, uh, course uh, 4720. And one of the questions I always asked students was, is the White House a credible source? You know, you're going and you're, you're asked to um, conduct a research, uh, you know, uh, study. And you want to find out, hey, puppy. My dog just came in. Um, you're asked to uh, cr create a study, and you cite the White House. Well, is it biased information or not? Yeah, it's biased. It is, and it doesn't matter who's occupying it. You know, if you know Donald Trump's in there, you know the things coming out of the, that office are going to be, you know, leaning to the right. If when you know when President Obama's in office, things that are coming out were leaning to the left. You know, that's just by nature the way things are. You can't really totally scrub all bias uh, from these organizations, but at least you can uh, acknowledge them and, you know, identify them and, and to keep that in mind when you're going through. So, uh, again, uh, you know, points, top, top marks to uh, Clay Benjamin for pointing that out. Uh, next uh, activity, show and tell what interest group appeals to you. You know, basically, people people always have a story. You know, there's something, some experience in your life that has caused you to, has inspired you or caused you to believe in a certain way, whatever. That's what this was. It was a format, uh, a forum for you to just say, hey, this is who I am. This is what I'm all about, right? Um, for those students that don't have a story or haven't actually reached that point, well, great. This is an exercise where it's causing you to stop and think about something that might appeal to you, which I did find someone said, hey, they admitted I really hadn't really ever thought about it. And so they went and they they did a little research and they found something that, uh, you know, kind of aligned with their thoughts. So I, th I think that uh, <laughs> qualifies it as a successful activity, right? Anyway, and I do I did read all of your comments. I, I saw all the various uh, you know the directions that you guys are going, and uh, you know gives you hope, right? Um, lastly, uh, quiz one was okay. You know everybody rocked it. Uh, no real outliers I could see uh, based on the analysis of the answers. There was nothing that was really 
you know, controversial, you know, I could see, you know, most everybody agreed, you know, answer A was it, you know, which it was, maybe one or two people said something else, but uh, other than that, there was uh, no big uh, deal, so anyway, that's, uh, that's a recap on that module, I'll see you next time.